can you dive a, a little bit deeper on the difficulty of scaling that technology into, cause, cause I'm like a skeptic. Like, I don't know, you know, anything about battery technology. I just know my Tesla and that can go 300 miles and it has like this super reliable, like workhorse battery. Like, um, but I'm curious, quantum scape doesn't even have a car we can get in. They don't even have a battery pack that we can try. It's like the technology is still far away. So to me, when I'm like, okay, we have a, we can hit $30,000 price point. We can hit this. We can hit this much range. You got this much specs. It's like, dude, like you haven't even done one once. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it just seems like it's right way ahead of the curve. So could you talk to us about the challenges of like where they're at now and actually the, what they have to do to get that into a pack that could be in an EV that someone could buy? And that's one of the missing pieces. And that's one of the, the first question that was asked by the audience with that panel discussion was, um, what are the challenges you see moving to a multi-layer cell? And for, they didn't answer that in a satisfactorily a satisfactory way to me. And there's a good reason why that was the first question from one of the other researchers, because it's easy to make a single layer cell work with a solid state battery. The first question you always have to ask with a solid state battery is how many drops of liquid electrolyte did they add to make this thing work? If they're doing everything that they said they're doing without any liquid electrolyte, then what they've um, announced the other day is a huge breakthrough, and I agree. Um, but they never clarified whether they're using liquid electrolyte. And the reason why liquid electrolyte is an, is, uh, an issue with solid state batteries, especially multi-layer solid state batteries, is because that liquid electrolyte, if it squeezes out around the sides of the, usually it goes, I think, between the cathode and electrolyte. But if that squeezes out and it starts touching the anode, it'll start corroding the anode. And uh, as far as I know, nobody solved that engineering challenge. Uh, for the time being. And it feels like if they did, they would have mentioned it maybe, or it's, or maybe there was like yeah. worry about infringing <laughs> on IP. Cause I know that that's another thing of like other companies like solid power who we're not even talking about or Toyota saying they could come to market sooner with the solid state battery are also claiming to have IP on production. So I wonder if it was like, is it a huge red flag? They, if, if it was a breakthrough, it's like, yeah, we didn't use the liquid electrolyte. Ta-da. Like wouldn't they have said it if they did it or is it like they would have said it, but there was some IP thing? Those are the only, you know, it's kind of like that doesn't really add up. Um, and then, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, absolutely. You're pushing my buttons here. If I was announcing a breakthrough with solid state, I would be make sure to clarify that it's an all solid state battery. And I don't know if they ever even mentioned the words all solid state battery. And those are the key words when it comes to battery research. Is this an almost solid state battery or, <laughs> or is it an all solid state battery? Fascinating. And uh, there, there is... Uh, you make a very good point about all the patents because so many people have been working on solid state technologies for so long. And these companies have filed hundreds of patents. Has QuantumScape actually announced something that dodges all those other patents, which is a difficult feat to achieve? Yeah. And the other big thing I keep thinking about the, the pouch cell is like, how do you, and the, this liquid electrolyte, so what's the housing of those cells? It almost feels like we have to have modules. And then I'm curious if we have to have a lot of micro modules from a first principles basis, Tesla's whole breakthrough was like, we don't have modules. That almost is like such a big, you know, first principles boost. I'm curious if, uh, is there going to be loss in the stats of the energy density, watt hours per kilogram, all of these specs, if we have to put in housing for the cells. And it seems like that, that's why to me, I don't buy the specs until we have the pack. Cause there's all these like engineering challenges. That's like, it's like me, like being at kindergarten and like running like really fast for like 10, like two seconds and being like, look how fast I could run. Like my mile time would be three minutes, but it's like, dude, you ran for like four seconds. Like, you know what I mean? It's just extrapolated in like a totally not fair way almost. Yeah. Yeah. They, they've, <sighs> my sister's a chemist. She's a factory floor chemist. And one of the things that she said to me the other day is I wish that the lab chemists had to deal with the dirty, equipment that we have to deal with that moves at 10 times, 100 times faster than what they deal with in the lab. Because they bring us stuff out of the laboratory and then we have to make it work on the lab factory floor. And oftentimes what works in the, the lab does not work on the factory floor. And to your question about modules, it remains to be seen. Uh, typically solid state batteries, uh, because they are safer, you can use less packaging and less safety materials around them. However, one thing that they noticed and noted in this presentation is that they, they still need a, a pack pressure of about three atmospheres. Three atmospheres is about 
the weight of a 200, 250 pound person on an area the size of a deck of cards. That's still quite a bit of pressure. And then you look at all those cells across the entire floor of the vehicle and making sure they have that nice even pressure across, across all of them. That's a whole lot of structure built around that. So does the fact that it's safer make up for the fact that it's gonna require a potentially extra structure to keep it um, under pressure? And on top of that, um, all the battery cell statistics that they showed us were at elevated temperatures, for instance, 30 Celsius and above. Um, yeah, that's, in order to make that work, you either have to heat the battery pack or you're gonna have to accept lower performance characteristics. Wow.